Good day, MMA fans, and welcome back to CIB 24's MMA Punchline. I'm your host, Adam Palumbo, and I will be bringing you the best mixed martial arts content every week from CIB 24's very own YouTube channel. In today's episode, we will be counting and breaking down the top five pay-per-view draws in the UFC as claimed by UFC President Dana White. Don't forget to stay tuned until the end of today's episode to catch MMA Punchline's ongoing segment, Myths and Misunderstandings About Mixed Martial Arts. As legendary MMA referee Big John McCarthy would say, let's get it on. Back at UFC 152 in the post-fight press conference, UFC Dana White listed the UFC's top five pay-per-view draws. Some of those listed were to be expected, while a few others on the list came as a bit of a surprise. Since the UFC does not release its pay-per-view numbers, much of the buy rates used in today's episode will only be based on industry intelligence by Dave Meltzer and should only be taken as estimates. So let's get started. This is by Dana at number five is Sugar Rashad Evans. A main event fighter since 2007, Rashad Evans remains a top draw in the UFC today, given the right opponent. The former light heavyweight champ has been a hot commodity since his flashy knockout of Chuck Liddell back at UFC 88. Evans' last five pay-per-view buy rates and events he has headlined have been fairly polarizing, either being smashing successes or very disappointing. Sugar Rashad is a phenomenal trash-talking artist, capable of gaining considerable hype when there is real animosity between himself and his opponent. Who can forget his in-cage confrontation with Quinton Rampage Jackson or the constant back and forth with former teammate and training partner John Jones? Now, as much as I love watching Rashad fight, I suspect that his day as a major pay-per-view draw has passed him by. Now, Rashad may very well be in the second half of his career, but he still holds considerable name recognition and I believe is a viable option for the UFC to use as a complement to headlining fights. As will be the case when he faces off against Chael Sonnen on UFC 167, George St. Pierre versus Johnny Hendricks. Now coming in at number four on Dana's list is John Bones Jones. Aside from his long-awaited grudge match with former teammate Rashad Evans, Jones has been fairly consistent in the events he has, he has headlined, with most of his pay-per-view buys coming in around the 500,000 mark. Now, even though Jones' buy rates have clearly been a benefactor from facing high-profile challengers, these pay-per-view numbers have to be considered impressive when you take into consideration that fans and Vegas odds makers alike typically have given little chance to John Jones' opponents. So listen, John Jones is a young athlete who still has years to build on his fan base. He can be quite polarizing with the fans, which is actually shown to be a plus with pay-per-view buy rates. He has the full support from the UFC machine and uh, recent endorsement deal with Nike, which should only broaden his exposure. And he just had an instantly classic fight with Alexander Gustafsson, which I think was the only missing factor keeping him from becoming a full-blown star. So expect his buy rates to go up, particularly if they can make that Gustafsson rematch happen, and expect Johnny Bones Jones to move further up this list in the future. Now up next, we have one of John Jones' previous opponents in Chael Sonnen. Now what can be said about Chael Sonnen that hasn't already been said? Whether you love him or hate him, think he deserves the opportunities the UFC has handed to him or not, there is one thing you cannot deny and that is that Chael Sonnen is the best trash talker to ever grace the sport of MMA. But the thing about Chael is that he has the ability to self-promote like no other and influence his pay-per-view numbers by the thousands, hundreds of thousands, even in bouts where he is the clear underdog. Now many people question the merit of his recent title shot against light heavyweight champ John Jones, but the bottom line is that Chael Sonnen affects the bottom line. He has only headlined three UFC pay-per-view cards in the past, but they have all been incredible successes, and there is no doubt his upcoming bout as a co-headliner on the UFC 167 pay-per-view card will provide some extra fan interest. Now our next fighter on this list, however, was involved in both of Chael Sonnen's highest pay-per-view buy rates, and that man is Anderson the Spider Silva. Up until the shocking loss to Chris Weidman at UFC 162, Anderson Silva had long been considered the undisputed pound-for-pound -pound king of mixed martial arts. His pay-per-view numbers, however, did not always reflect his current title as the greatest mixed martial arts fighter of all time. Silva's lopsided wins over his competition and inability to speak English fluently damaged his markability 
and always kept them from truly connecting with North American audiences. Though Silva's pay-per-view numbers did steadily rise as his success in the Octagon continued, it wasn't until his last second comeback win over Chael Sonnen that truly cemented Silva as a star. Now, even though Anderson is 37 years old and is coming off a loss to Chris Weidman, I suspect that he has a few more fights in him. In fact, it is because of his loss to Chris Weidman at the, and the immediate rematch he has received that I think we will see the next pay-per-view card headlined by Anderson Silva possibly outperform any he has done previously. So folks, so far we've listed the second, third, fourth, and fifth ranked fighters on Dana White's list of the UFC's top draws, leaving the number one spot wide open. Now it should come as a surprise to no one that that spot belongs to longtime welterweight champion George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre has been one of the most consistent draws the UFC has ever seen, with every single one of St. Pierre's last seven fights pulling in over 700,000 buys. It is clear that fans will pay to see GSP fight regardless of his opponent. Perhaps most impressive, however, is that even at UFC 124, with the co-main event of Stefan Struve versus Sean McCorkle, a rematch between St. Pierre and Josh Koscheck still convinced 800,000 people to spend $45 on a pay-per-view card with little else going for it. And with the hype, controversy, and lineup surrounding George St. Pierre's upcoming fight with Johnny Big Rig Hendricks, I expect St. Pierre to continue his streak of being the most prized commodity in the UFC organization. Well, folks, that rounds out our breakdown of the top five draws in the UFC. According to Dana White, we will end our episode with another edition of our ongoing segment, Myths and Misunderstandings about Mixed Martial Arts. Today's myth, that the only people watching Mixed Martial Arts are dudes. This couldn't be further from the truth. The people who claim that only males with their overly testosterone-ridden bodies could possibly be interested in combat sports have clearly never taken a look at the crowd at a mixed martial arts event. There are females everywhere, and Dana White in the UFC have long known a significant portion of its fan base has been female. But people have always been skeptical. But the latest reports on sports statistics, however, back up their claims. Bloomberg TV reported that 40% of any given audience at a major UFC event is made up of females. In Scarborough Sports Marketing, a company that tracks American sports trends and behavior, revealed that 27% of the viewers who tuned in to watch UFC 154 were also, in fact, female. That's 27%. The inclusion of a women's division in the UFC and female fighters like Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate getting the full push of the UFC marketing machine will only boost female viewership. And advertisers should take note of the greatly ignored and untapped market of the female warrior spirit. Well, there you have it, MMA fans. Just another MMA myth debunked, debunked here on MMA Punchline. Keep checking back in to CIV24's YouTube channel for more episodes of MMA Punchline. As always, leave your comments below. I'm your host, Adam Palumbo. Peace out.